Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day uh, from Thousand Dollar Car Guy. Had to get an early start this morning because I listed all that stuff on Craigslist yesterday, and I got a few people that want to come up and pick up parts today, which is great. Uh, a little cash in the pocket so I can buy the other swap parts that I need. So we are going to take out the remainder of the back seat. That's the goal for right now. There's just two more little bolts. Sorry, humidity, we're fogging up. It'll get better in a little bit. There's two more bolts, one there, and one all the way at the other end. I don't think that one in the middle is actually attached to anything. Anyway, we're going to take out that seat, stack it over with the other seats, and that bottom half, and then that guy can come pick up the seats. So it turns out with that rear seat, there's actually three 10 millimeter bolts, and then two uh, 11 millimeter bolts that go on the top. So three at the bottom, two at the top. At least that's what was in mine. It kind of looks like somebody fixed this one before. I'm just bagging up the hardware so the next owner of it has everything he needs. So the next thing I'm trying to do is get this whole harness outside the car. Now I believe that is the main engine harness. What I mean is that one I can trace to underneath here I think it's only held in by that single bolt, probably 10 mil. I already unconnected this, which I'm not sure what this is. I'm sure it's very important, maybe some kind of brake thing. Anyway, unplug that. Um, and then that harness runs along here underneath the fender to that clip. I'm gonna snap that out of place. And then that runs up underneath there. It hooked into a few things in the front of the car, like the uh, airbag sensor and uh, turn signal lights, things like that. And that goes into the power distribution box, which is basically, I think, all of the main components to run the engine itself. So, my next goal is to take out that bolt, which I'm guessing is extremely long because it's holding it on the inside of the car, and see if the connector will unplug. So the connector did come apart. Now I'm going to break the ties that are plastic holding on to the inside of the fender here. Now one, two, three, four, five, and there's an itty bitty one. Oh, this must have anti-lock brakes. Not anymore. Okay. Well, that was a big one. Sweet. So let's see if we can pull the inside out now. I don't think it'll be long enough to reach. You have to squeeze from the outside to get the inside to fall in. So squeeze, push. Did we get it? We sure did. It's also a ground connected down there. Hey, it is long enough. How cool is that? I wonder if this matters which way it's plugged in. There's a giant square key. So that has to be on that side. And basically, you just retighten the bolt if you hadn't forgotten your socket set up there. So that's reconnected. Good. Good, good, good. Lots of harness hanging out here. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Lots of sweat happening right now. I just plugged in my fuel pump harness again, and I want to check to see if the ground that's still connected on the driver's side down here, I'll show you in a second, I want to check to see if that ground is doing anything super important. <laughs> what I mean is, is it keeping the engine from running? So I now have this whole side of the harness outside the car. And then this whole bundle that you see here is literally only held in by this one ground wire right here. This whole mess is just floating there. It's not attached to anything. And then it goes all the way across the car to the other side. So right now I want to find out if well, one, it still starts. Make sure we do that. And then two, I will undo that Phillips head screw, take off the ground, and see if it still starts. If it does, it means I can disconnect it, and we have the whole driver's side undone. Fuel pump, easy to hear now. So it still starts, obviously. Now we're gonna shut it down and disconnect that ground. starting to sputter there, but it seems to do that every single time. So let's disconnect the ground next. 
It's yeah. just a normal Phillips head screw. Well, I thought that screw was going to be stripped. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't. So essentially, we're just going to repeat the same test. Fuel pump still priming. Well, there you go. It must not be super important, so we can leave that ground off. And now that whole wiring harness is disconnected from the driver's side. Thanks, Roy. Well, that was a nice little break. I got to eat my bagel breakfast again. Bacon, egg, and cheese on an everything toasted bagel with butter. So good. So, I'm all showered up, so I really don't want to get super greasy again, but I do want to finish pulling out the ECU on that side. But first, I think my mom actually snuck in a Father's Day gift for me. Uh, it's over in the Echo, I believe. Yes! Look at that. She's a beaut. So how about that? Got my little electrical line. Running all the way back, 100 foot of cord. But now, at least I get a little bit of circulation of air up front there. So, let's see if we can spy it with the camera what we're working on next. That mess. So a lot of those connectors that you see over there are just looped around each other. So I'm going to undo them and then plug them back into each other just to free up the harness a little bit. I think with just a flathead screwdriver, we'll be able to get most of them apart. black and brown. Remember that. I think we should find out if it starts just like this. Currently no start, so I'm gonna go plug something back in and see if that makes the difference. Nope, no start yet. I think that brown connector might be reversible and I think I may have just blown a fuse. I definitely screwed that up pretty bad. Okay, so I think we blew something up in the fuse box, perhaps. So I was right, I did blow up some fuses. A big 20 amp fuse. And a 10 amp fuse. So I'm going to try and find two of those, replace them, and then try starting the car again. So I replaced them with some fuses I had. I changed one from a 10 amp to a 15. Hopefully that doesn't kill me. Hooking the battery back up now. Attempt number two, listen for some pops. Nope, still got nothing. So I just plugged one of the other connectors in that's on the passenger side, and battery's hooked up, we're gonna try again. Okay, it's alive again. That's a real good sign. And my fuses didn't pop. At least not yet. Well, it's good to have it running again. You have no idea how good it is to have it running again. <laughs> That is my biggest fear, that one of these things is gonna blow up and I'm not gonna know which one, and then I'm gonna be stuck. So I'm going to try, uh, well, battery's disconnected again. I'm going to try pulling out the ECU and most of the rest of that wiring harness. That's the one, seven millimeter. Is it just a guard, doesn't even do anything? I think this is something important to mention. So, see those two connectors Let's see if we can move around here those connectors hanging down i think i had one of those reversed with something else that was very very critical i think those are the two that are going to the door for power locks and uh stereo stuff and window switches that's my hope anyway so there's only really one connector over there besides the main harness connector so i'm going to do my restart test again to make sure that i'm not screwing anything up I'm sure you're noticing a pattern here. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Very 
All I'm basically doing at this point is wearing out the starter. I'd like to take a critical note right now to state that these three connectors, um, basically green and yellow, black and purple, then the majority of the pink and light wires, like white and yellow, and then these green, blue, and white uh, striped. Critical note for them, also notice that there are two major grounds uh, going from here which is basically tying into that wiring harness, but probably more a large ground for the ECU. So I believe the next thing is to unplug the ECU and try and get that thing out of there. Hopefully it's not grounded itself. I'd also like to point out that it's really annoying trying to work in this close a condition. I barely fit in there. Next important thing is it starts to pour here. So after you take off the ground lug, which is a 5 16 bolt, there's two wires attached to that. Next, you'll start to need to loosen up the plastic housing that the ECU is actually kept in. Now, you can get to it by just removing the 5.5 millimeter bolt that's in the bottom right-hand corner. Once you do that, you should be able to pry the plastic up. Uh, you can sort of see it outlined there. I'm gonna do it live in a second. If you pry it up, you should be able to pull the ECU out the bottom. Wish me luck. Prying the plastic up, sliding the ECU out. Then we can flip it over and get to the large, large bolt that should be holding in the entire connector assembly. It is a 10 millimeter bolt that holds on that connector. My next task is going to be marking up the connectors that are down there. I'm just going to label each side. So one side of the connector, other side of the connector. One, one, and then two, two for the next one. That way I know which ones to put back together once it's back outside because there are honestly duplications on the passenger side for connectors. I think what I ended up trying to do before was trying to start with the ignition, the window switch. <laughs> so that's why I blew up the fuse. Here's the ECU out. You can see I marked it 1NJ because on the other side of the connector there was a 1NJ but only on one side. So this way I'll know which orientation it goes in. They're also pinned in such a way that you can't put it in backwards. It's not so much hard work, it's the fact of being crouched over to do the work. So, as you can see, I labeled all of my important ones, and G for ground, plus I have the, uh, the bolt in there. And then here's the other side of the harness. Well, one of the pieces, anyway. Here's the other two down here. One, two, three, and then the main ECU one. So, that's basically it for down here. I can technically pull this out the driver's side. Let's do that. This might be a tricky one, but you're probably just gonna see a lot of my butt. Okay, so maybe it's better to keep the wires inside right now, especially since it's raining and this section kind of floods just a little bit, as you can see. Now that we got those wires basically sorted out, that's everything for inside the car. Everything can now be moved outside the car. It's just hung up on a few things and all of those extra connectors I still need to remove. So the ECU comes through this part of the car but I need to start taking apart some of these clips to be able to get to the hole that passes through the firewall so I can pull out the harness and the ECU connector. We'll probably start by taking apart this very large loom. Uh, it's held on with a 10 millimeter bolt and then move quickly to this connector, which is just a flathead screwdriver to pop that out. Wasn't that easy. That is a very large connector. And next, we'll take this one. Once I figure out how we take it. There's a simple clip in the back to pry up and it comes right out. So we got this big old connector. 
I really hate these little plastic clips that Ford use. It's a real pain in the butt. Now what did that gain us? We still can't pull it through just yet. Too many leaves in the way. Holding up the other end of this large connector is a metal bracket, which there are two seven millimeter bolts at the top. Take them undone, take them undone, take them out. And then there's another larger one, which is bracketed to something else, uh, which looks to be about a 10 millimeter bolt. Oh, we gotta stop. This shirt was gray when I started. I guess it's just a dark gray now. Anyway, with the rain and the humidity, it is just insanely humid right now. So I'm going to wrap up this episode now. Uh, here's all the connectors that either need to pass back through the firewall, but they actually seem like they go into behind the fender. And with that liner and everything in there, I can't really get to them right now. So as you can see from the inside, we are all ready to go on this end. We just need to get through that little firewall. Little firewall. So, I think on the next episode, I'm actually going to take off this fender because it's pretty nice. So we'll try not to destroy it. Uh, that way it gives us much easier access to get to those wires. So stay tuned. As always, thank you so much for watching this episode of $1,000 Car Guy, and I can't wait to see you on the next one.